said in Luke chapter 10, verse 2, to pray for workers of the harvest. Why? Because the harvest is plenty, it's wide, it's vast, there's so many people out there, but the workers are few. And God uses people, even Jesus went out and sent teams when it comes to accomplishing his mission through the local church. So I really believe that one of the main components of being a church planter is being able to recruit. And by recruit, I don't mean sheep swapping, I don't mean intentionally trying to take people away from other churches. I mean going and find missionally minded people to come leverage their lives to be a part of the work that God has called you and set you out to do. Because this work is people work and people disciple people. You can't grow a church or reach a community unless you have that team. We see Jesus commission people to go in groups. He sends people out in teams. And this obviously is done best through the local church. Jesus said himself, we're to pray for more laborers to go. So planters, we should pray for a team, but then also for more planters to go plant more churches. Like part of our prayer life, should not just consist in, Lord, please bless my church, but please send more people to plant more churches. We need people with us to accomplish the work because lost people uh, can't reach lost people for Christ. Only believers can reach lost people for Christ. And then hopefully establish a church reaches other communities through more church planting. But I really do think part of our job needs to be finding people, going out there and asking people to come be a part of this mission. Even if they give one year, two years, uh, a short amount of time just to help us get established, help get the work of the church going. And also, it can be really discouraging planting a church. So you have to have people around you. There's going to be people who reject you. There's going to be people who make you feel foolish. It's going to be discouraging a lot of times. Uh, but this reality should not slow down our work. And one of the keys to us continuing continuing and having perseverance through the discouraging times is having people around us who will encourage us and love us and pray for us, people you know that have your back. So our work is to do the will of God and faithfully be about the work that he's put before us. And that's never been a solo effort when it comes to disciples being sent out. So be someone who, yes, has a product to sell. And by that, the vision you have for your church, which shouldn't be fancy, carrying out the Great Commission in our local context. That is a shared vision every single church plant should have. Doesn't have to be fancy, doesn't have to be branded. We have a great commission. We have that, what the coach said, we have that product of the good news of Jesus, the one true product that exists. And our job is to take it and to go. So rally people around it, ask them to come with you and help, to give their lives, see themselves as missionaries, not just people who attend a church or go to a church or had their Bible study and go home, but as local missionaries with you to carry out really that prayer of Jesus, that laborers would be sent in to the harvest. How awesome would it be if you see that prayer answered right in front of you? And then that answered prayer becomes more answered prayer where these people become a part of a church to help you out as the planter and the team that God's put around you to then go plant more churches until Jesus comes back. So my hope is that we'll be people who pray that Luke 10 to prayer, that Jesus will send workers into the harvest because the harvest is plenty and the laborers sadly are few, but that can change by the grace of God. So be praying for that Luke 10 to prayer to come true. And at the same time, see yourself as a recruiter, getting people around you for the greatest purpose that's ever existed, the purpose of the church to take God's mission to your community and to the world. Mm -hmm.